The Gospel writers make a point of telling us about John the Baptist preparing the way for the Lord. So let's make a point of paying attention and see how this man prepared the way for Jesus. We will surely learn how to make a straight path in ourselves for the coming of the King and how to help others to do so. John was to be found out in the desert, off the beaten track. Mark says that the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. He did not go to them. His ministry was not a Jerusalem ministry. He didn't go up to the big city seeking accreditation from the religious authorities. He was not a product of the system. His clothes and his diet marked him out as a man of the wilderness. Now this may have made him a poor man, it certainly made him an independent one. And you cannot speak with any power into a broken system when you are a product of that system and dependent on it. <coughs> Challenging lessons to be learnt here because there is definitely a system in place today by which all manner of ministers and youth leaders and musicians and Christian authors are validated, accredited and endorsed. But you have to say, looking at the state of the church, that system does rather look as if it's broken. And if God is going to involve us in his ministry of reconciliation, then we cannot be properly products of the system, but rather of the Holy Spirit. Now, as a Baptist minister who went and studied at a Baptist college and receives his stipend from a Baptist church, what does that make me on this point? Challenged is the answer. In Luke Chapter 1 and verse 15, Gabriel makes clear to Zechariah that John will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb, something which is immediately evident when Mary visits Elizabeth and the baby in the latter's womb leaps for joy at the sound of her greeting. The whole of the backstory which Luke gives in full is that John isn't just telling people to take God at his word, because any number of preachers can do that and probably were doing that in those days. But he is the living embodiment of the fact that God can and must be taken at his word. Witness what happens to Zechariah when he first doubts the angel's message and then acts upon it with faith. When people look to us, they need not just to be told to take God at his word, they need to see the evidence in us that God's word can be trusted absolutely. Luke chapter 3 begins with some traditional history. We find out who is governor of Judea, who is Tetrarch of Galilee, Ichiria and Trachonitis and Abilene. And having found out which bottoms are seated upon which luxuriously appointed thrones, we then get told where the real life-changing stuff is happening, in the desert. If you read in verses 7 to 9 the substance of John's message to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, it's not exactly a warm welcome to you all and thank you for making the journey, is it? you brood of vipers. It's not very nice. No, but here's another thing we have to remember if we're going to prepare the way for the Lord, and that is, niceness isn't the rule of our speech. Truth and love, yes, but not niceness. If everything gets wrapped in the same warm blanket of cuddly niceness, and quite often everything does get wrapped in the same warm blanket of cuddly niceness in our churches, then the product of our ministry will be complacency. Exactly that sort of complacency that John's words are aimed at here. And when they ask how to obey the command to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, it's interesting that John teaches everyone in general how to repent of selfishness and greed. That's in verse 11. And then there are two professional groups, both of whom have chosen to work with the powers that be and who earn a comfortable living at the expense of the oppression of their fellow citizens. John's instruction, if obeyed, will leave them doing a hard job for none of the rewards that made them take the job on in the first place. Would we dare tell people to prepare the way for the Lord like this? Or would we be more reasonable, more sympathetic to their circumstances, more eager to gain their support? As Jesus points out to the crowds in Luke 7, 24-35, you didn't go to hear John to meet with a traditional ruler. He defied expectations. And in many cases, see verses 31-35, to 35, 
that was reason enough for them to reject his message. But for others, even the tax collectors, verse 29, the way was prepared. If you're happy, thank you for listening.